working on it, waiting until he had again an inspiration. This is just one of the truly great artist books that was done in the past, I would say, 20 years. I was really very fascinated about the creativity of uh, his bookwork and decided right away to invite him to come to Germany and give him an exhibition in Düsseldorf there. I wanted that we would make a book in an edition, so we have had the idea to, because he could not make like 20 or 25 copies uh, or I think we even planned at the beginning 30 copies. He could not make 30 copies like all the same. He was not interested in doing it and secondly it would not have been uh, possible physically. The whole process started in 1981 and he died before finishing this book. The last three pages were not cut out except for five copies. And the other ones, all the first pages, as you, as you see here, beautifully hand-colored by John Eric. It's beautiful, but it's unlike anything else that Brode has ever created. It's actually the differences among his books that in part, I think, contribute to, his, to my feeling that he's a serious book artist and deserves serious critical recognition, because he doesn't repeat himself. I think that was one of Eric's most accomplished feats. He started out appropriating a book that already existed. He was able to manipulate it in such a way that it became another art form. He was working with found objects, dealing with the, the problems of finance. He lived from day to day. Friends and myself contributed uh, to his uh, his needs. We we supported him, and uh, later on in his career, he used the barn up at my house uh, for many, many, many summers as his uh, studio uh, workshop for painting and for everything else that he did. Tony gave me a painting of his. Uh, after he died. It's a glorious thing. Behind it is, is hardboard, and then there are two blocks of wood there, and so you can hang it this way, or then you can turn it totally around this way. So I hang it from time, sometimes I hang it triangularly, and the thing makes sense from every angle that you go. It makes sense. When I met him, that was probably about 84, he was still in wonderful spirits and you can also you could see that in the books because he, they were still very colorful that it changed you know when he became more apprehensive the color kind of went out of many of his work I am now at another turning point, orbiting and rotating at once. There is no publisher in sight. I'm painting, working on some new books, and optimistically unclear as to what will happen next. After his death, I discovered he made a series of Xerox things. And in this book, he, for the first time, seemed to express that he is afraid of AIDS. 
He never mentioned it personally to me. We never talked about it. But in these few pages where he used newspaper text and so from the cutouts of the words, there was no doubt that he was afraid that he might have contracted it. But it's very kind of, it, it makes my heart heavy just to see that, that I was not able to help him in any way in that respect. I just don't have, the strength is not with me like it was last summer. And I hope that I can get it back. I just don't quite know how yet. But I will find out. I will figure that out. I don't know. I mean, I hope I can survive all this, which I may be able to do. I don't know. I should be able to do it. You know, it's deep down in my little brain. <laughs> You know, it's like, just keep, you know, just keep your head on straight. Don't panic, you know, try to get, you know, better. When I first heard about AIDS, I thought to myself, the most beautiful people, the most creative people, and the most fun people will die first. The most beautiful people for the obvious reasons that they're the most desired sexually and the others because they're the most uninhibited. Never did it occur to me that the world that I knew, this, this art world, this, it was a community. I mean, I can tell you there was a true community of artists that lived on the Lower East Side and worked on the Lower East Side and attended each other's functions, collaborated with each other. Never did I think that there wouldn't be anybody left. It was like well, being at war and like people were disappearing off the face of the earth the same so thing fast. happened in the Vietnam yeah. War, the Second World War, the Vietnam War. Yeah. Uh, and the people were gone and nobody, when they came back from the war, or you know, of course wars do have a tendency to end, uh, whereas AIDS does not seem to have this big ending, but uh, it's the loss, though. I mean, I don't. Nobody think has the time to. Nobody has ever gone into uh, how you would live with this loss of, of people and kind of what it means in terms of your own life. Uh, I don't think it's something that people are able to comprehend. <laughs> I don't really ever want to go back to the hospital again. I've been in twice. And uh, three strikes and you're out, you know? That's about it. I don't want, I don't want all those things sticking in me. I don't want people floating around me. I don't know. There's not much they can do for me. I don't want to be there. I'm afraid of being sick. I mean, that's the part I don't, that's what really scares me and frightens me is being sick. As far as dropping dead, it's all over. That's the lucky part. Am I going to get done what I want to get done? Or am I going to be gone? And I'm at that point right now, it's 50-50. body was falling apart completely but he was so there so completely and utterly focused as here and now and not tomorrow not in an hour's time now and you know he impressed upon me I mean I found the contact that, that I had with him is something which is well it's deep in my heart I mean what happened there he kind of felt that he was going to single-handedly overcome whatever it was and come through he was kind of really heroic about it till this very last time when he just decided to go out of the hospital because we talked a few days before and he says, you know, I, I, I will go to that, that show. I don't care what the doctor says. And I said, Eric, you're totally right. And he says, that's what I will do. 
He was in a wheelchair and uh, uh, he knew that he would be dead in a very short time and he was surrounded by his art, by the beautiful things. That was the last time I saw him. Towards the end, I saw him every day and I was with him when he died. I was holding his hand when he died. And he went very peacefully. He just, he was very weakened by th at that time. That was at St. Vincent Hospital and another friend was there. And so I'm still to this day happy that I was there when this had to happen, this sad event. I ask myself every day just about why did he have to go? I mean, he had so much to, to give. And I'm so enthused with all his work and stuff. Why him? I don't know. I, that I'll never understand, but that's what happened. I think he will have an impact. I think he brought something new. People will see this and yes, he will, he will inspire people. There is no doubt about that. You can look at any big catalogs or anything, his name will come up. I think he goes on living through his art. And we can't say anything better for an artist than that, can we? I mean, that is what they were hoping to achieve. And he certainly achieved it. There are a number of scholarly books that have just come out that deal with his work. It only shows what an incredible mind and an incredible genius that he was. Eric's stature in the world of art. And yes, he will, oh, he will be remembered. Oh, yes, he had an impact. I mean, he was an artist. And the book art is one manifestation I'm of sure the thing. Many more I mean, things. what I've seen, many shows. All I wish stuff. that people could see his work. He was truly magical in what he was able to do. It is so incredible that out of a little book, he was able to turn it into something that was out of this world. And so I wish. Eric was such an apparition that I think I still see him on the street, particularly Christopher Street. I'm sure if there are ghosts walking up and down that street, he is one of them, you know. <laughs>